Hey everyone, Brad here. Today I'm going to address some of the things that we carry with us. I got a question back, something about a water pump. I talked about a spare water pump I carry with me. And yes, I do carry a spare water pump. And uh, on top of that, I carry a host of other things. In today's video, I'm going to show you all the things that we carry with us wherever we go, no matter what. Everything that I carry and everything that we address in this video is somewhere on our Amazon page. Uh, if you go to amazon.com slash shop slash 13 adventures, everything that I'm going to discuss today, I think everything, or if not everything, almost everything is on there. And I've got it broken down by category. So RV or airstream cleaning, sewer system, dump station stuff, uh, kitchen essentials, airstream in general stuff, cleaning the rig, washing the rig stuff, workout equipment, so on and so forth. I've got them all broken down into categories and I have a video, quite a bit of videos on there showing me using those things or how, you know, my review of those things. But there's nothing on there that I don't use currently or have used in the past. So um, check out our Amazon page. If you don't buy anything from there, that's fine. It may give you an idea of some stuff you want to check out for your own setup. Let's go check out everything out. If you ever wonder what I carry for the water system, extra parts and things like that, here it is. So I always have antifreeze just in case we happen to go somewhere that's cold. I have the tank treatments. Now I've used the drop-ins, the pour-ins, the powder, all the things. Uh, my favorite is the powder. I'll put a link to that down in the uh, video description, but it, it seems to work the best to me. And I put it in the gray and the black tank. Uh, currently, I'm out of the powder, but I have these drop-ins that I purchased at Walmart. I love the Zero-G hoses. Now, I have a, a black hose. I use this to wash the trailer and to flush out the black tank. And I have a end here that I can spray and wash the rig with or do leak checks. I just did a video about re repairing the roof, so I did a leak check using this. And I use the blue one, the drinking safe Zero-G hose, for everything else. And you notice there's a 90-degree fitting on here. I do that because when I put this on the end of this to fill up the fresh water tank, it sits there and goes out at a 90 degree angle. Some people, me included in the past, have used the water filter. So I always put a water filter on, but I, now I put it on the spigot end instead of the end of the hose end. But if you do have a, if you do have a water filter, hanging from the end of your rig. I don't recommend it be sitting out like this because that puts a lot of pressure. That and the hose pulls down on that uh, city water inlet valve. So if you're going to do the the hose, uh, the filter hanging at the on the airstream side of the rig, put it in one of these 90 degree filters so it can hang straight down and it doesn't put a lot of weight on that inlet valve or your pressure regulator for your city water using the 90 degree. So if you leave one of these zero G hoses hooked up all the time with pressure on it, they'll start leaking. So I don't leave it hooked up all the time. I have a standard standard hose that if we decide to hook up the city water and leave it hooked up all the time, I use this uh, permanent kind of hose here. And I use this to refill the tank. And I use this to um, do all the other things like I mentioned. These two stay in the bumper of the trailer or right here in the side compartment or right at the very back of the truck my the the big blue kind of permanent hose stays in a, in a box in the back of the truck and i very rarely hook it up it's not that i don't trust city water it's just that it's easier for us because we travel so much to not have city water hooked up all the time and to keep our tanks kind of full so we fill, fill our fresh water and use our water pump 98% of the time. Um, I don't have a heated hose anymore. I don't carry a heated hose. It became too much of a hassle taking it apart and ho 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 hooking it up and you, it, heating this, this water filter, because I filter every bit of water going into our water, into our rig. Every bit of water gets filtered going in and then sometimes we filter it more before we drink it, but I don't put dirty water in the trailer ever. Uh, I have a water testing kit to make sure that my water filters are doing good. So I test it before I put it in the rig and I test it after to, with this filter to make sure my filters are still doing good and that it's, it's good, safe drinking water. 
because you travel all over the country, you just never know. Um, that, so we put water in the tank and with the, using the heated hose, I, finding a way to heat the filter. You got to wrap it with heat tape and plug it in. And it just became a, a big nuisance. I've made a whole video on how to do all that stuff on, you know, living in the winter time in the, in the RV or in the Airstream. And I, I showcased how to wrap that thing up with tape and how to heat it up and how to keep it warm and how to keep it from freezing and all those things when you're sitting stationary for a long time. But we tend to go more, uh, tend to go so much, I don't sit stationary very long or very often. So um, you just free filling our tank is much easier, which is why, if you didn't know, we put that intelligent water pump control on there from Terry in Canada. And that thing makes a huge difference for the sounds of that water pump. So. Uh, if you haven't seen that and you do use your water pump and it makes a lot of noise, you may want to consider that pump controller. Other things I carry around, speaking of water pump, I carry a spare water pump all the time. Uh, this is just one I bought from, I don't know, I got it on discount, but uh, it's a simple water pump. You need to find one that, that gives you the flow rate that you need for your trailer. And it's a 12 volt sure flow there. You can buy them kind of anywhere, but... Uh, I found this when somebody returned it, so I got it like 40% off, super cheap, and I carry that with me everywhere. One of my favorite things that I carry is this Watt splitter, or you may have one with four or one with three, something like that, but I put this on whatever the campground water spigot is, and I can have my place for my blue hose, I can have a place for my black hose, you know, hook my water filter on one side and nothing on the other side, because sometimes I need water on one thing, I don't need it on the other. and um, it makes it easier sometimes because sometimes those those water spigs are pretty low to the ground and if they're hanging straight down, getting a water pump or a water filter in there like this is kind of a pain. So you, something to offset it makes it much easier to get on and off uh, depending on where you are. I have, here's another one of the 90 degree fittings. Um, I have these two things to blow out the water lines with. So this one can hook to an air compressor. This one would be like just a push of air on the end of it, uh, but they both kind of work the same, just blowing air into your water system if you want to blow out the water lines. I have another standard uh, cheap and easy water uh, spigot if I need one for the hose. And these little quick disconnects are really handy. So depending on where you are, if you're moving quite a bit or you're hooking hoses up and taking them off quite a bit, I really use these in the fifth wheel. So what I would do in my fifth wheel is inside the water compartment, I would put these on and then use these things to quick disconnect them in and out because it, the way the angle was, it was hard to get in and out, but all of our water connections run on the outside, easy to get to. But some of you with a fifth wheel or some of you with a different type of water compartment may want to consider these quick disconnects because you can hook this always screwed into your trailer and in the end of your hose, you have this and you can just quick disconnect it on and off as you travel around. This is a water shutoff, so between your line, so it kind of does the same thing as one of these, but it's just a singular. I don't really use that that often. And we haven't been in some parks where they require you to water the grass, so I have that. Freshwater hose, so this would be for like your winterization valve hooked into your water pump. I have extra PEX lines, so hot and cold PEX lines in case I need that. I have every type of PEX fitting you could imagine with clamps and bites and all the things like that. So should I need to repair a water line? I got all the things that I can do that to repair a water line with. This is a, uh, I call it Big Bird, but Big Bird goes down in the toilet and cleans out the tank when we need to do that. This one is a water heater. So you're, if you had the old, the electric slash propane water heaters, not the on-demand type, but the kind with the tank, uh, sometimes you have to flush out that tank, particularly those with the anode rod. And this was a thing to use that I used for that. I don't have that anymore, but I keep it just in case somebody is near us who needs this. And I carry a spare sewer hose in case the one we have breaks and all the things goes in the 90 degree into the ground. Uh, so I can see that. And check with your dealer. If you have to replace your city water inlet, your black tank flush or something outside, your power outlet, the smart plug, whatever else like that, these gaskets are pre-cut for those things. And you, your, your dealership can sell you some of these, uh, but I keep these in case I have to replace one of those because odd, odds are when I go buy that thing, it's not gonna come with the proper gasket. So this is the gaskets for Airstream. So these I keep a, a set of these 
uh, gaskets for the outside of the rig in case I have to replace something out there. Um, so that's why I have these gaskets. But that's the water system uh, stuff that I carry with me all the time. I have extra sewer caps and uh, hose filters, the little mesh filters that go inside of your hose, uh, into your hoses. But these things are handy, and um, that's what I carry for the water system. All right, just a little showcase of what we carry with us on for workouts. So I have a 15 pound plate here and you can do a number of things with that. I have a variety of kettlebells here from 40 pounds to 30 pounds to 15 to 10 pounds. I have a mace that I do a lot of stuff with. Uh, medicine balls, you can do slamming, you can throw them back and forth to each other. Push-up stands, some are stationary, some twist. It's called wad floss. Um, you can wrap it around your muscles and, and it works very well to compress them and let them go. It's called getting a massage. This uh, puts it in your back, lower back, and massages some very muscle, very hard muscles to get to. Um, so right.com, PSO right. But you really want to get some muscles. You can get digging beside your abdomen with this thing that you can't get to otherwise, and it's a pretty cool way to get digging in just some frisbee for us to play when it's time uh trigger point massager so this is for your feet you sit on the ground you can roll your feet and put it on put your um center your foot on the edges and it works pretty well to roll out your feet this thing is a lifesaver for me i get knots on right on the back of my back and i can shepherd's hook here and i can press in those muscles that are super sore and make my neck hurt from way down there where that thing's pressing in the bottom. But this is a wonderful tool for massaging and taking care of yourself. Some body fat calipers. Uh, a stick to roll out muscles when they're super sore. I have a lacrosse ball. So this goes kind of with me all over the place. I use it to work on this tendon back here. Uh, that big tendon hooking your hamstring in, lower back upper back, wherever, it, a lacrosse ball works really great. I have a blood pressure cuff, just because when I'm curious, I can check my blood pressure. I have a large ball for doing other things that I can't get, or that's better than the lacrosse ball. A thing to strengthen your grip and forearm with, so you just have some tendonitis in here pretty bad. The wheel in this thing starts spinning, and it's off kilter, and you do this with it to keep the ball moving. And it's really, really strengthens your arm, forearm, and gets rid of some tendonitis that I had. So, wonderful little device there. But these are the things we carry. Now, other things, if you don't carry equipment with you and you have a weight distribution hitch, for example, the bar, this typically the weight distribution hitch with a chain on the end or just an equalizer weight distribution hitch, you can use those bars for curls, you can use them for overhead pressing, you can use them for squatting, you can use them for all sorts of things. Um, so that comes integral with your camping camper sometimes. Um, there are things that you use around your rig, cans of soup, uh, small children, <laughs> pets and things like that you can use to lift weights with. But uh, we try to stay fit wherever we go. And because we boondock quite a bit, these are items that we carry with us uh, to work out wherever we are. Obviously a gym is a preferred method, but these things are go with us wherever we go. And they do take up space, and they do add weight to your vehicle, so that's a factor as well. But this fitness is very, very important to us, and we mostly walk and ride our bicycles, and we do some weight training with these things. Uh, but that's how we stay fit on the road. Also for workout gear, I have this 50-pound weight vest that I can put on and walk around with. This is this is one of a uh, very instrumental thing in training for hiking the trail or just training in general. You can take the individual weight packets out and walk around with it. And if you walk around with this for a couple hours and take it off, it feels like you weigh nothing. And then I add mat here for uh, doing sit-ups and such on. I also made a specific video about uh, full-time RV fitness at some point that I can link right here for you if that's something interesting to you to watch. All right, this is gonna be stuff in no order whatsoever. Uh, just stuff I keep in a bin in the back of the truck. We have three different sizes of power electrical cords. So sometimes we boondock quite a bit. We boondock and sometimes we mooch dock with family. 
and we don't they don't have 30 or 50 amp near their house so we can plug into 110 because of our pool inverter the 3000 watt inverter we can still use the battery and be charging and but and turn the air conditions on with a 110 outlet because the the inverter will pull power from the battery to offset whatever's not coming in from here and I won't trip all the circuit breakers in the house but you still need a pretty hefty duty power cord uh, some of these extension cords you get are just really cheaply made and don't don't have good power but this thing is robust and can handle a pretty big load without burning it up or getting too hot or tripping circuit breakers but we have a couple of different sizes and I don't know if you notice on our hoses but Blair got me these little things called rapids uh, and they they velcro together and they hold your cords and power cords and water hoses and all the things in, in a nice little fashion and some have hooks you can hook them up on the wall on a nail if you still have a house but I don't but anyway it keeps our cords and stuff in a good fashion I have sandpaper because you never know when you might need sandpaper and really what I use it for is up here at the front on the hitch uh, we have you know, you get a little rust on there, I can uh, uh, sand off the rust, scuff it up, and then I can use some spray paint to make it look pretty again. I have Ad Seal for roof, and I have some silicone for other things if I might need that. I have WD-40, which I don't really like to use on the trailer because things stick to it. So silicone spray and lithium grease are my main things that I like to use. T9 is a really good thing. You can use it in, in many of those same applications that you would use the silicone spray in. Really handy. I have uh, steel wool to plug in the holes of the rig whenever it's necessary to store it. And speaking of storing, I have these tire covers that go on the tires to cover up the tires to keep the sun from beating them up when we do store it, which the only time we have stored a trailer is when we hike the Appalachian Trail. Uh, tape, painter's tape is always handy for something, duct tape is always handy for something, and real duct tape is really handy for the air-conditioned vents and things like that. Um, I don't know if I ever made a video on it, but on an old trailer I went inside the two holes, the returns for the air condition, and I ducked all, I used this tape to tape all that stuff up and make it pretty and uh, quieted it down quite a bit, but that's what this is for. I have some big wrenches here for... If I ever need to change out a, a ball hitch for some reason. Bicycle lock. If you live in the international model, you know that this stuff is really handy. Around your slotty doors, uh, that white trim will separate or come apart. And this is, I have some of this. So if you ever, you can remove that trim and fill in all the gaps and there would be a big gap in the bottom. So I can cut a little piece and put it in the gap. And it still looks pretty, but that's what that trim is for. I have a rubber mallet for camp stakes or whatever you might need them for. This little uh, foam, it's got tape on one side, but it goes around your screen door. And I have these inserts for my receiver hitch on the truck. And I have these little plastic silencers that go with that. I have a ball that goes in the back of the truck for a gooseneck trailer, should we ever need to pull one of those. I have my via air air compressor here with all the extra hoses and whatnot we do have walkie-talkies in the event we're in a place with no cell phone coverage but i don't like backing up or doing things with the walkie-talkies like blair's trying to communicate with me because i'm turning the steering wheel and doing things it's hard for me to look so i like the hands-free option of the cell phones when we're backing or doing something like that but we do have these as a backup i have this cool ladder here this is what i used to get on and off the top of the trailer with and I have this small little step ladder that I use to wash the trailer with because I can reach most things except for the roof. And I use this to lubricate the awning arms and whatnot and to clean the windows and we'll do whatever else I need to do because it's a handy little step stool. I have a snow shovel because I really need that this time of year in Florida. But in Utah, it came in really good handy. These are snap pads, but they're leveling blocks, if you will, and they can go on top of a standard what we'll call the Lego blocks, the little stackable blocks. These can go on top of those, or you can just use these if you only need a half inch or one inch lift. I'm a big fan of the, you know, the snap pad. As you can see, I have a shirt. And if you're looking for snap pads for your stabilizing jacks or your leveling jacks or your under your wheels or things like that, we do have a discount code, 13 Adventures. Um, I'll put it down here in the bottom of the 
the screen here, but you can get 10% off if you order with our code, and I appreciate it very much. We have a, some AstroTurf that we like to put outside. I have a standard camping mat that unfolds that most everybody has. We have, I have my Craftsman Mechanics tool set here that I've talked about at length. It can do most anything on the trailer. I have a torque wrench that I keep the lug nuts torqued with. We have a solo stove, the, the medium size solo stove, and I also have the real little one because it came with buying that one, and a saw and a hatchet. Uh, for keeping ourselves warm in the winter time. I do have a bag here of nothing but ratchet straps, bungee cords, and a toe strap, which is always handy, but the rest of this thing is full of bungee cords and ratchet straps and such to tie things down with should I need to. Also for sewing the trailer, I have this proven lock. This is one of the best hitch locks I've ever found, and I really like it because you can lock the chains in here as well, and it goes up on your nose. I will use it if we have to store it somewhere or for park somewhere in a parking lot. I typically, if I have to disconnect a truck and we're in like a Walmart or a Sam's Club parking lot, I will put it on there, but typically I'd never disconnect from the truck. This this tarp here, all these, these bins, I have big Costco bins in the back of the truck with our camping gear and all this stuff that I keep in here. I keep those in there, but I keep this tarp over that, even though I do have that Retrax bed cover, but the Retrax bed cover still does leak on occasion. So. I have this tarp to cover up all the stuff in the bed of the truck. Or if you ever had a serious roof leak or a window leak or something like that and you needed to cover it up for some time, uh, the emergency tarp, I call it, in case you were to need that. In our, uh, in our vehicle, I have a portable jump starter. So it's a, a lithium battery, basically a small lithium battery that you can buy them at most any place online now, but you can plug it to your battery and get a jump start with it. Uh, we both have those in our vehicles, really handy. I also have this, Yeti box, like a briefcase, but in here is kind of my intricate tools like wiring things, uh, lights, all my electronic stuff that I use to measure wires, so volt, volt meters and headlamps and water tape, water system tape, 3M tape, just stuff like that, all the little small stuff that I use and need on occasion that I don't really have a spot for, but I use this stuff quite a bit, but I keep it all in here in the back of the truck. A couple of things. This is a uh, California car duster. You can use this to dust off your airstream. This one's pretty old and uh, beat up. I need to get a new thing for it. You can wash it, but man, this sucker's pretty rough. I'm, I'm going to wash it, but anyway, if you is in a dusty spot, people driving by on gravel roads, as the dust sprays up, you can use this to dust it off, but be careful because it will still scratch the rig depending on the type of dust. This is a wash and wax all so if you're not familiar, I'm a huge fan of the Aero Cosmetics Cleaner. Uh, I've talked about it many, many times over, but these pads will strap onto here, and you can extend this thing and wash your rig with it. Uh, and this stuff's fantastic. So I have that hole and a bunch of these things. I use this hand mitt to wash, actually hand wash the rig. Uh, I used to have a brush that I like to use, but I don't really use it on the Airstream. 303, I've talked about this a hundred times. Everything rubber, window seals, your front uh, window guard protector, the propane tank cover, the little handle. All those things get treated with 303 all the time. Uh, I have this step down from a 50 to a 30 amp. And I have this propane hose extension. So... If we're sitting, for example, we lived in Utah and Salt Lake and it was cold there many months out of the year. Not, not, not terribly cold, but we had to use a propane and, and filling the propane tanks often. Um, I got to where I would keep a small standard grill size propane tank and just set it outside down below the propane tanks. And I can hook this one in to the standard propane line going to the rig or one that goes to the one of the tanks, I just hooked it onto this thing and run this out the bottom of that propane tank cover. And I would just continuously refill that 25 pound tank, or 20 pound tank, whatever it is, uh, over and over again. So I didn't have to take the propane tank cover off every time I needed to fill the propane tanks. And anytime we were ready to go somewhere, I just disconnect this thing, throw the little propane tank in the back of the truck and I had propane on the rig already. So. Uh, just a propane hose extension and for those of you who 
are in a place where you're needing propane quite often and, and handling those big big tanks is kind of problematic for you. You can get you one of these hose extenders, hook it into the standard place where you'd hook up a propane tank to and just run it down out the bottom of it and then you got that propane tank sitting on the ground. I carry a couple road cones here, collapsible road cones. They stay in the in the, in the bumper. Uh, what really, what I use these for is when we park in a parking lot, like all the spots are going this way and we park uh, perpendicular to all the parking spots, somebody inevitably will park right in front of me or right behind me. So I put these cones out so people don't, sometimes still people do. But I talked about leveling. I have a big stack of these things. They stay up here in my, what used to be the battery box, now a storage box. And that's what the snap pads can sit on top of like that if they need to. Um, if I have to go a half inch up on one side, so we use the Level Mate Pro and it's really handy, but if I have to go up a half inch on one side, I put one of these under one tire on that side that needs to go up and that's giving me a half inch. If I need to go up an inch on that side, I put one of these under each tire and it'll give me an inch on that side. If I need to go up to, you know, one and a half, two inches, three inches, something like that, I use these. These are Beach Lane models, but you can go up pretty far on these things. If I've got to go farther than that, I use these Lego blocks and stack them up. And also you can use this or the Lego blocks stacked up if you have a dual axle trailer to change your tire with. Um, speaking of changing tire, I have a tire iron here. Now, if you have the Flying Cloud model, the lug nuts are recessed in, so you need a specific uh, lug nut wrench or a specific socket to go in that hole because it won't work otherwise. The, ours is protruded out, many other models are protruded out, but the, the Flying Cloud rim is, is sunk back in, so getting getting a socket to fit that is kind of a pain. Now something I don't really concern myself with or carry with me is a jack to jack up the trailer with uh, because I have a dual axle and I can use one tire to, to come up on that one tire to change the wheel with. But those of you with a single axle trailer, you should think about and consider what type of jack do you carry with you. Maybe your vehicle jack will work, but get it out and try it and see if you can get it up high enough. Or do you need to carry some extra blocks and something to put a jack on? And is that safe enough to get around where you need to? A couple other things, uh, an orange vest. So if you have to go outside and pull your rig over the side of the road, it, people are, don't pay attention and uh, something bright and shiny may get their attention, but it's something really handy to have that I think everybody should carry with them, regardless of what you're doing. Uh, a flashers. So these are LED flares, I call them, but these little pucks here, you just turn them on and they shine and you make them do all sorts of blinking. But you can throw these out on the road and hopefully keep somebody from running you over. It comes in a little pack of three. And this, this is a tire pressure gauge. Now, uh, I keep my tire pressure, and this is one of the most debated topics in the world. Your tire pressure for your trailer should be done, and I talked about this in other videos, but your tire pressure should be run based on the tire chart. If you have the Goodyear Endurance Tires, go to the Goodyear website, download the tire pressure chart. So the weight of the trailer on that axle tells you what your tire pressure should be. 80 that says on the sticker and 80 that says on the side of the tire is max cold tire pressure meaning if you if this trailer is as heavy as it's ever going to be and it's full of everything and you're maxing out the weight of the trailer that's the only time that that tire pressure should be at eight zero i run mine cold uh, with the weight of my trailer right now about 58 or 60 psi if i'm carrying a full tank of water i may go up to 62 or 64 somewhere in that range but this is a pressure gauge here and I hook it into my air compressor and I can get specific tire pressure readings on it with it. So it's really handy. All right, a few things that I forgot to mention during the video that I realized now was a fuse kit. Uh, if you don't know, your airstream doesn't come with spare fuses and sometimes they blow and typically they blow right where you're in the middle of nowhere and nowhere near to go get one. So carry some spare fuses. Various forms of tape, a sail switch for your heater, some some extra trim so the middle belt line trim here and you have one down below and you have some right here on your door latches uh, maybe you want to get a roll of trim in case some of yours comes off or some double-sided tape to stick it back on there with lubricant 
Uh, I talked about lubricant, WT, not WT-40, but silicone spray and uh, lithium grease and T9 or whatever you want to use, but keep your moving parts lubricated. 303 stuff, cleaning stuff, all that stuff doesn't come with your trailer. Now, typical uh, RV dealers will it'll give, it'll give you a generic sewer kit with some plastic gloves and the, and the cheapest water hose and the cheapest dump hose and all that kind of stuff. Please upgrade and get you some much better stuff because uh, what typically comes with an RV from an RV dealer is the very standard generic cheapest box set you can purchase. That's kind of an overview of the stuff that I carry with me all the time. This is stuff that goes with us wherever we go and I can work on the rig, kind of do any almost any kind of maintenance I need. I have the tools to fit almost every nut and bolt on here and I have the electrical connectors or troubleshooting stuff like that uh, but that's that's what I carry and I hope that helps you out. If you have any questions or something I missed or skipped or didn't talk about or you've seen in another video maybe I don't carry it anymore or maybe you think I should have something that I don't have it with me that I didn't talk about please let me know. Thanks for letting me be a part of your day. Happy adventures everyone.